Okay, so in this video, we will find the Taylor series of the function x over x plus 5 centered at 2. So if you recall, given a function f of x, the Taylor series is given by the sum from 0 to infinity, the nth derivative at the center of the expansion. Here we take the center to be 2 over n factorial times x minus the center to the n. So here x0 is equal to 2. The center of the expansion is 2. Well, to find the Maclaurin series of f of x, we need to find the higher derivatives at the center. So let's start taking higher derivatives of f, and hopefully we will see a pattern emerging. So f of x equals x over x plus 5. This is the zeroth derivative. And now let's start differentiating. f prime of x, well we have a quotient so we use the quotient rule. So we'll get derivative of x is 1 times x plus 5 minus x times the derivative of x plus 5 which is 1. So it's just minus x over of course x plus 5 squared. Let's simplify on top, we're going to have x plus 5 minus x. So we're left with 5 over x plus 5 squared. But it's worth noticing now that even though we have a quotient, the numerator is a constant. So let's not differentiate again using the quotient rule, but let's simply bring this up as a multiple of 5 being x plus 5 to the negative 2. Now differentiating this will require us to use simply the power rule. This will be simpler than using the quotient rule. So let's find the second derivative. And the key is, in trying to find the Taylor series, in this case centered at 2, we need to find a pattern for higher derivatives. So the key is when you find higher derivatives, do not simplify. If you do simplify, you may lose the pattern. So the 5 is a constant multiple, it stays there, times power rule negative 2 times x plus 5 to the negative 3. And now let's differentiate a few more times. The third derivative will be, well 5 times negative 2 is a constant multiple, so it will stay there. Power rule negative 3 x plus 5 to the negative 4. Let's find the fourth derivative. 5 times negative 2 times negative 3 constant multiples, it stays there. Power rule again, negative 4 x plus 5 to the negative 5. And let's find one more derivative, the fifth derivative, and hopefully now we see the pattern emerging. This is a constant multiple, so it stays there. Power rule times negative 5, x plus 5 to the negative 6. And now we're going to ask, well, can we find a pattern for the nth derivative of f. Well, let's see. We start with the zeroth derivative, right? This is the function itself, so the zeroth derivative. And you can see that there is something different between the zeroth derivative and all other higher derivatives. Right? The multiple of 5 is there from the first derivative then on, but not for the zeroth derivative. So this hints at the fact that we will find a pattern for the nth derivative, but only beginning at 1. So we'll leave the zero derivative aside, as this will simply provide us the constant term of the Taylor series, and we will then find the pattern for the other higher derivatives. So there's a lot of pieces here. Let's try to find a pattern for each individual piece. Well, from the first derivative then on, the multiple of 5 is always there. So, it will be there in the general nth derivative. Now that we have captured it,
we can ignore it as we have just taken care of it. What else is always there? Well, if you notice, with the sign of the expression, this would be positive, then this would be negative, negative times negative is positive, negative, negative, negative is negative, 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 negative is positive. So you see we have an alternation in sign, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Well, to capture an alternation in sign, we of course use negative 1 to the n. But we have to make sure that the alternation in sign begins at the right point. So when n equals 1, the first derivative, we're supposed to get a positive 1. But if you plug in 1 here, you'll get negative 1. Well, to shift this, we simply add n plus 1. And now when n is 1, we get negative 1 squared, which is 1, and then we'll have the alternation in sign. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and so forth. So we can now ignore all of these negatives because we've captured that pattern. What else? Well, look at the multiples of the power of x minus 5. Here this is 1. Here this is 2, which is 2 times 1. Here it's 3 times 2, which is 3 times 2 times 1. Here it's 4 times 3 times 2, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Those are factorials. So it's the first derivative, it's 1 factorial. Second derivative, 2 factorial. Third derivative, 3 factorial. Fourth derivative, 4 factorial. Fifth derivative, 5 factorial. So in general, we can see that for the nth derivative, we will have an n factorial. And now we can ignore the other terms as we've taken care of the pattern. And all that's left is the power of x plus 5, which is always there. The power is negative. And here you have to be careful. Now we have the negative. Let's look at the positive part of the power. When it's the first derivative, it's 2. When it's the second derivative, it's 3. Third derivative is 4. Fourth derivative is 5. Fifth derivative is 6. So it's always one more than the derivative. So this would be not negative n, but negative n plus 1. And now we have captured the general formula for the nth derivative of the function at x. But of course, this is only valid if n is at least as big as 1. If you plug in here n equals 0, you will not get the zeroth derivative. And now we're almost done, right? If you look at the nth coefficient of the Taylor series, well, it is the nth derivative at 2 over n factorial. So now let's evaluate our nth derivative at 2 and divide by n factorial to get the coefficients of the Taylor series. So, let's plug in nth derivative at 2 is equal to 5 times negative 1 to the n plus 1 times n factorial. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 to the negative n plus 1, but I will send the 7 to the negative n plus 1 on the denominator, and the negative power will become a positive power. So this will be simply over 7 to the n plus 1. And remember that the nth coefficient is the nth derivative at 2 over n factorial. So let's now divide the nth derivative at 2 by n factorial. And if we do so, then we have a nice cancellation taking place, as n factorial over itself is simply 1. And so we have now a general formula for the nth coefficient of our Taylor series, namely 5 times negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 7 to the n plus 1. And this is, of course, only valid if n is at least as big as 1. But now we can replace this in our Taylor series. So let's just go back. f of x was equal to this, which is this as the Taylor series. So let me re rewrite this.
and I will have to be careful not to make the mistake of replacing this in the, in the Taylor series blindly because we know that the series begins at 0 but our formula for the nth coefficient is only valid when n is at least 1. So we'll have to separate the first term of the series with the rest of it. And the one thing we have to also do is evaluate the function at 2. So f of 2 will be 2 over 2 plus 5 which is 2 over 7. And now let's split up the first term with the rest of the Taylor series. So when n is 0, we have the 0 derivative of f which is f at 2. So f of 2 over 0 factorial is 1. x minus 2 to the 0 is 1, so we're left with f of 2 plus and the series now will begin at 1 as we have left the first term when n was 0 out of the Taylor series. And now we can replace, right? f of 2 is simply 2 over 7. And when n is at least 1, the nth coefficient of the Taylor series is given by this expression. So 5 times negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 7 to the n plus 1 times, of course, x minus 2 to the n. And this is now the Taylor series of the function x over x plus 5 centered at 2. Of course, the natural question to ask now is, well, for which values of x is the equality valid between the function itself and its Taylor series centered at 2? Well, you can tackle this question using the ratio test on this Taylor series, or of course you could also use the root test, and you will find the following. The center of the series is 2, and the interval of convergence will go from negative 5 to positive 9, excluding both endpoints. So this equality is valid for values of x that lie strictly between negative 5 and 9, and if you notice, from the center of the interval of convergence to the right and the left hand point, the distance is 7, and so the radius of convergence of the Taylor series of x over x plus 5 centered at 2 is equal to 7. And that's it.